The FA chairman, Greg Dunk, is with us on the show. How are you doing, Greg? I'm all right. How are you doing? Yeah, uh, I'm you're... okay. I just uh, try to sum up in a nutshell how League 3, full of Premier League youngsters, will improve the England team. Make me believe it. Well, it wouldn't be League 3. It would be across probably four leagues. It would probably be across one, two, three, and the conference. And the idea is a set of very similar to what happens in Germany, in France, uh, certainly in, in uh uh, in Spain, where it's very successful, you'd have uh, a B team playing in the lower leagues. And they could go up and down, they could get promoted, they could get relegated. But then you'd probably have, I don't know, you'd probably have, I don't know how many of them you'd have, we haven't heard, but there could be 10, there could be 15, probably 10. So how is this going to improve the England team? That was the question. I don't see how it, there's well, a direct well, link. Because well, are you well, telling me that these players, having been in conference, League 3, League 2, League 1, all of a sudden, after a couple of years down there, are ready, going to be ready for Premier League first teams? No, no, but it's about the progression. If you read the report, what we're talking about is a progression, a pathway from being 18 to being 21, 22. At the moment, the progression is too big a jump. Uh, to get into a Premier League first team. And if we don't do something about it, we're going to end up with very few English players playing in the Premier League. Greg, having played sport, and, uh, different sports, well, I played football when I was a youngster, I didn't quite make it, but I ended up playing cricket, and I've seen it in rugby, I'm close to rugby, and, and see how that works. But surely the best young players, which what we're talking, we're talking about the elite players here, are going to go on and play for England and help us win European Championships and World Cups, do play in the Premier League. Your Rooney's, your Ross Barkley's, your well, Ashley Cole, your Rio Ferdinand's, your Jack well, Wilshere, you, you can go on and on. Num- you look at the numbers of players playing in the Premier League, uh, they've been declining for years. It used to be 70-odd percent, it's now 30-odd percent. But if you look at the top four clubs, last year it was 29 percent, this year it was 23 percent. So there was a decline in the number of English players. There's only one English play, young English player has made his debut in those top four clubs in, Eng- in the English league this year. But in part of the problems deeper uh, than that, in part of the issues is there's so many issues with football. Is but what you see now it's such a pressure cooker for managers because you only have to look at the situation at Manchester United, a classic. David Moyes comes in, he plays the experienced players, buys a couple Fellaini and Mata, uh, and ignores the youngsters. Soon as he goes, Ryan Giggs knows he's got the gig for three games. What does he do? He plays the youngsters. He's nothing to lose. That's the only way we're going to get youngsters playing by the managers not getting sacked after a run of three or four bad games. I agree. How do you stop that? Tell me. Well, how do you stop it? First thing I'd do is, but if a manager gets a two-year contract, he has, he can't get sacked during a season. So no matter what happens in that season, he cannot get sacked. And the problem is, you see Fulham, three managers in a season. Ridiculous. Yes, I agree. I agree. But, but that's, that's within the power, it's not within the power of the FA, that's within the power of the Premier League and the individual clubs. Agree with that, and maybe there's a, a culture change needed, and and the commission. Well, I, I mean, what you want is you want you certainly want more. You go around the Manchester United training ground; they've got a great record for bringing through kids. And there's this great, great quote from Matt Busby saying, "You never know how good they are until you play them." And I agree. I think we're living in a world where that's harder and harder. Therefore, you say, if, as we've gone around and talked, we've been to most of the clubs, and we've said, "What would change?" the flow through of kids and they've said they've got to get more competitive games. If you look in Spain, the average where they have B teams and even C teams playing in the lower leagues, uh, places like Barcelona and Real Madrid, the average uh, young player at the age of 21 has had three times as many competitive games as, the, as in England. I mean, read, read the report, read the analysis. Now, you might not like the solutions, and perhaps people have got better solutions, but the analysis is pretty devastating. It is. There's a lot of percentages in there. I'm going to give you some figures from this week, actually, because we talk about we only need 23 for a World Cup squad. They need to be good. We need 11 for a team. Now, this midweek, two Man City players who started were English. There were two England internationals on the bench. Eight Villa players are English. Five Sunderland English. Two West Brom. 17 from two games. Uh, of over four per team. That's just in midweek. Arsenal regularly have Wilshere, 
Oxlade Chamberlain and Walcott, Gibbs and Jenkins in England qualified well, as well. Chelsea started four Englishmen on Sunday. West Ham against Spurs, 11 of the 22 starters were Englishmen. Half of Man United's outfield players on Tuesday were English. Three others on the bench, including an okay. England international. Look at Liverpool's first team. There's regularly six English players in that first team. They're doing all right. But look at the numbers. Just look at the numbers. I've just given the you numbers the numbers. The, no, no, and no, the, and you're, you're those just, numbers I've just no, given no, you. A, hang hang on a classic, second, Greg. You're a classic hang on. radio journalist who just wants to pick numbers from a week. Look at the numbers. What do you mean pick numbers week. from a week? Well, you go to any week with Liverpool this season no, and yes, those players Liverpool. will be playing regularly Liverpool. and they've been Liverpool. top of the table regularly. Look but, at those but, Arsenal players. Right. They play regularly, don't they? So the no, point I'm making to you is, do you really... You know, when there's, no point me, there's no point in me coming on here if you're just going to shout at me. Well, I'm asking you a question, time. and you're, no, you're no, trying to shout over it's me. A, it's a dialogue, well, because I'm the interviewee, and you're the interviewer. I'm trying you're to ask you a question. question. You didn't let me finish the question. The well, question well, is well, this... The question has now been on for about two minutes. The question is this... But, when there are so many, when there are so many Englishmen playing in the Premier League, and some of them are at the very top in the top four, do you really need to rip out the heart of the lower leagues, which is what the Luton Town managing director Gary Sweet described it as, with this silly idea that you've come up with? Well, it's an idea that you'll find in almost every country in Europe, so it's not that silly. And most of those countries have more young players from those countries go in their top leagues and in, in there for their squads than we have. Look at the numbers in the report. It's frightening. It frightens me, the number of English players. Now, I don't think you rip out the, lower, the bottom half of the lower leagues. I think you put, probably get two or three extra clubs in each league. That's, all you, that's what's going to happen. Greg, when you sat down and you chatted to uh, the people on the, uh, on, on the committee and you debated this, uh, which I'm sure a lot of time went into it, I mean, what, what was the initial problem with reserve team football? I played that when I was youngster. Like I say, it yeah. didn't seem to be a problem back then. It seemed to have no. dwindled. It seemed to have got lost in what it was I, trying to do. I, I think that's right. And a lot of players we've talked to, you know, Rio Ferdinand, who was on the commission, but John Terry and all that, they all waxed lyrically about reserve team football when they were young. Right? But but somehow it got lost. And somehow the, the, the Premier League spent 10 years trying to run a reserve team league and it didn't work. They then introduced an under-21 league and most of the guys who run the academies say, we're not interested, it's not good enough, we want to play somewhere else. Did you watch now, that? Did... You can, I mean, if you don't, I mean, the question is, what happens if you do nothing? And you could do nothing. I mean, football over many generations has done nothing. What happens if you do nothing? Do you just, do you accept that the number of players, as I said, the number of English stars in the top four clubs of last year, this season, is down to 23%. Last year was 29%. Now, it's partly to do with injuries and things like that. But do you let it get down to 15%? No, I, well, I understand. I understand that you need to do something, and doing nothing isn't a good idea. That's why I was energised when I heard your speech at Mill yeah, Bank. But, but I, th- but I think by ripping up the lower leagues, and uh, you know, I don't want. I, if I, you were a chairman of a lower league club, I can't believe you're oh. even supporting this idea. How would you oh, have well, felt as chairman of Brentford if you'd have been denied promotion by Man United B and Man City B above well, you in the table? Well you, well, you wouldn't have been denied promotion from that because they can't get promoted into the division into the championship. So we From League Two to League that. One. From League Two to League One might happen. If you look at what happens in Spain, in France, but particularly what happens in Germany, that's not what happens. Most of these B teams don't end up at the top of the league. They end up quite a long way down. But they are getting real games, real competition against real players. Now, why should they do it? Well I think the big clubs would I think there's been a real problem Uh, in England about the amount of money that has gone to the big clubs and how little has gone to the lower clubs. And I say this as someone who was chairman of a club who used to have whip rounds to pay the wages. Now, if you can get them to put more money into the lower leagues to give more stability to clubs in the bottom end, there's an awful lot going to receivership and go bust. That seems to me a price worth paying. Greg, just, just a simple one on this. Guys. I've not read the old report, I'll be honest. I've read bits and pieces of it because obviously we didn't have long to prepare for it. But on, sure. on just on one thing, you're talking about 10 to 15 teams um, in this division. What happens if you get them into League Two, they're all going to League One promotion, and the top 10 teams in that division are all the B teams? Does the 11th team get the promotion? 
No, well, what you'd have to, you'd have a system whereby that couldn't happen. But you, but I'm telling you, if you look across Europe, that's not what happens. That's not what happens. The Manchester City B team, by and large, the Barcelona B team doesn't beat teams in the lower league. I mean, I think the Barcelona B team is 16th or something this year. I mean, it doesn't it just doesn't happen? Now, if it happened, you'd have to stop it. I agree with you. You couldn't have a situation where the top, top six sides are all B teams and the seventh, eighth, and ninth get promoted. You couldn't have that. But that's not what the evidence tells you will happen. <laughs> well, I hope it doesn't, because to ch- fundamentally change the system and the structure of English football, yeah, well, which has which been thriving and energetic and, and well-loved and well-supported by thousands yeah. of people for many years, and you're, well you're telling us that there's a chance that it could be ripped up within a couple of years because no, it's gone not, wrong. I don't, I don't think it'll be ripped up at all. I think... I think um, most lower league football teams, most lower league football clubs, are always on the on the edge of bankruptcy. Uh, not all, but a lot of them. If you look at how many have gone bust in the last ten years, it's an enormous number. Now, can we give can they can we give some sort of financial stability to those clubs at the same time as getting giving kids? We all want more kids. We all want more English kids to get through the system. But you, you, that's not going to happen unless we make changes. I've got to say, Greg, you've just been incredibly disrespectful to a lot of lower league chairmen who go out of oh, their way to listen, run their clubs listen. superbly, saying most of them are on the edge of bankruptcy. No, no a lot of Every year, some are. I tell you, I've been down there. I was a lower league chairman for several years. I, everywhere I went... I would go and find the chairman or the chief executive and I said, how do you fund this? And they're all funded by people. Very few of them make enough money to survive on the, out of their own mind. Wow. They're all funded by people who could leave. Now, I don't think journalists by and large understand that. I don't understand, the, I don't understand how fragile the lower leagues financially are. And this is an attempt to say, hang on, there's a way of getting more money down there. Yeah, that's the other part of it. And just the final question I'd like to ask you, and I was really disappointed to read this. On page 71 of the report, it actually says that you're planning to ask the Premier League to bribe the Football League clubs to accept this League 3 nonsense. It says, we propose in return for agreeing to this reorganisation, there should be a significant financial settlement from the Premier League to lower division clubs. Really? They're that desperate for money, which you've just pointed out. You're actually going to yeah. try and bribe them? You're, well, let, the let, FA let, are going to ask the Premier League to give lower league clubs no, money no. to smooth this, to sweeten I'm the asking, deal. I'm asking the clubs to do it. But if they don't want to do it, if they don't want the money, let me tell you, the, the Premier League already gives large chunks of money to sweeten the lower league clubs. And every so often says we're not going to do it anymore. And half the lower league clubs say, well, we're going to go bust then. Greg, listen, uh, I believe we've run out of time, uh, which is a shame. I uh, appreciate you coming mm. on and, and answering some forthright questions. Cheers. All right, look after yourself. Thanks, Thanks, Greg. Greg Dyke, the FA chairman. To say I'm angry is an understatement. <laughs> I have a vote of no confidence in this commission and its leader totally. This is Talk Sport. Well, Stan, you'll remember my epic call to you, mate, earlier in the season um, after we played Chelsea and I called for Roger's head and I was lampooned and I've been lampooned since on, 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 on other... 